welcome back to the realm of unpopular opinions and it is time for another bookshelf tour which is always like the best part of my end of year youtube experience i love filming these i love watching these it's just very entertaining and everyone seems to love it so without further ado i don't think this is going to be that long but i still hope you enjoy it because i'm not going to be pulling the books out i'm just going to be showing you them pointing things out and explaining anyway Let's get into the video and I hope you have fun. Let's get started then. This is the first shelf. Now on top I've got my plushies and some other random stuff. But this is the first actual shelf. We've got the wooden, the wooden, <laughs> the cotton ball angel thing or whatever. I, I got it from a friend a long time ago. The first shelf, as you can obviously see, is pretty much just the Harry Potter shelf. I've got here all of the editions that were the only ones that we owned this one i bought extra so we can have a paperback that's the one that my parents bought as soon as it came out and this is my set i finally completed it this year the slithering the slytherin paperback set this is my book sleeve i keep it here for easy access and these are some really fancy books on the right there really fancy books that I got as a kid and they're just beautiful to flip through flip through so I really enjoy having them here I also have knickknacks I've got these like little dwarves because I think they're so cute that type of doll where that where it's all beard and no eyes we've got some Harry Potter trinkets obviously and two of these wizards because I just think they fit really well and just like last time I still have elephants I think I've shoved elephants everywhere I could on my shelves because I've heard that they're lucky and I don't know why I just had a lot of elephants this thing is a Slytherin journal it's way too pretty to write in I mean <laughs> you know the drill and I got that when I was in Scotland I think it was like 35 pounds or something but it kind of fit really well with this sort of aesthetic so yeah this is the first shelf Shelf number two, we've got the middle grades. I am slowly running out of room again, which is why this is already on top, but ignore that for now. This is where part four will come after I'm done reading it. And yeah, I do kind of mind that they are not the same size, but what are you going to do? They're just, middle grades are some of the prettiest books and probably the only colorful ones I have on my shelf because I mostly read fantasy. Here we have the entirety of Diary of a Wimpy Kid. This barely fit because of the last one that I bought and I'm gonna have to probably stack them like that, like horizontally soon because I'm gonna run out of room. Here I have just a Christmas tree. I keep that here all year long. I don't know why because all the colors of the shelf just kind of remind me about Christmas. <laughs> I put Kaneki here because I didn't have anywhere else to put him. It doesn't really fit, but I mean, it is purple. It is purple, and that kind of fits with, in better here than anywhere else because this is the most col colorful shelf again. Here I've got the extra books. I still want to reread that series and see if <laughs> the continuations have been translated in, into English at least. And here we've got 39 Clues. I have Dork Diaries, and then Everything I Own by Roald Dahl. I'm still not sure how to read that correctly in English. I feel like it's not really an English name, even though he's very much from the UK. Roald? Ro I, anyway, let me know. I have the witches, like, up there because it was kind of fitting. And I keep the hippo here, too, because, again, didn't have anywhere else to put him, and it kind of fit in best with the middle grades. So this is shelf number two, and it's definitely the most, <laughs> the most happy-looking one. Next up, we have the manga shelf. I mean, it didn't used to be the manga shelf, but now it's kind of been taken over by manga. Anyway, I'm going to have to rearrange this when I buy the second Tokyo Ghoul box set. It will probably be just a Tokyo Ghoul shelf, but so far it's not yet. Here we've got Death Note, like the actual copy of it. Inside it has all the names that Light wrote in and everything. I bought that. I don't know. I don't even really know why, but it looks kind of cool. I put Ayato and Takemi Kazuchi and Kion here because the picture of Ayato is really pretty and I wanted to put something to match with Noragami. I only just started, started collecting Noragami, so I only have, what, five volumes so far? Only like 
19 more to go. Here I put the Attack on Titan playing cards. I will take those out just to show you the package. I got them on Wish. I put the plant here to hold up the keychain, the Death Note keychain. And then we have the Death Note manga. Next up I've got, <laughs> I mean obviously my favorites. I have the Bungo Stray Dogs light novels that I'm collecting behind there. I'm not sure where I'm going to put them where I collect the other ones. But so far they fit in here so it's fine. Here we have my favorite trio and the one sticker from that pack with Odasako and Dazai. I thought it kind of fit and I didn't want to use it on anything else. Then I have the Tokyo Ghoul novels right there. Uh, only one missing and once I buy the second box set this entire shelf will be Tokyo Ghoul and then I'll officially have everything to do with Tokyo Ghoul. I also put this eyeball here. It kind of it kind of fit the vibe. Up here I have the extra poster that I got with this box set and I have the mask mask that I used for my costume for Halloween. Then I have obviously the box set and there I have my little Dazai pin because it, it's kind of cute and it fits in and I have the two Tokyo Ghoul art books for Tokyo Ghoul and Tokyo Ghoul Re. I love those. I really recommend them. I read <laughs> I read them through and through like all the second one has like interviews with Sui Ishida and it's very entertaining if you want to learn more about him I guess. I would recommend them if you're a fan. If not obviously it's not that necessary. It's mostly just extra art and his comments and it's kind of kind of funny but considering that he's my favorite manga mangaka I think the word is now I think they're definitely worth it next we have the wheel of time shelf which I mean <laughs> is completely full and completely entirely dedicated to the wheel of time I finally have all the hardbacks last time I didn't I don't remember how many I had last time but anyway now I have them all these had to be place like this because they wouldn't fit because of new spring but I kind of like the way it looks like this I took off all of the dust jackets because I mean they are god awful and <laughs> this is just prettier they're all blue if anything but yeah you can see how much the branding changed and again if anyone knows why the wheel of time hard cut hardbacks are so hard to find and why they're not producing new ones I'd love to know because these were ridiculously expensive. I managed to find the other ones for a reasonable enough price, but these were expensive as hell. This one was very close to being overpriced, and that one I wanted a giveaway. It would have been ridiculously costly if I had to buy it myself, so that's that's my treasure. So anyway, up there I have elephants on Fires of Heaven because that's when <laughs> the Sean Chan are properly in the story. I've got a wolf, which, I mean, self-explanatory kind of. I have... This figurine, which I kind of thought looked <laughs> looked like Moraine with the head thing and the blue. And anyway, it just kind of fit. And then I have the other books, which are obviously the prettiest. These are my prettiest editions. So I kept the dust jackets on. I put this little tree here and this like rose and Kaneki. Because I do not want to see a memory of light, I want to forget that it exists. And this one kind of actually covers <laughs> Gathering Storm too. I, Towers of Midnight is my favorite out of that Sanderson trilogy. So I covered up A Memory of Light completely and I put Kaneki here because again, I had a lot of images with him and I didn't want to cover up the box set itself. So I kind of just littered him throughout the shelves, but I kind of think it fits because it's black and white. So it fits the aesthetic, but yep, this is now the complete Wheel of Time shelf. And this was definitely a very, very costly project but I mean it was worth investing into it's one of my favorite series of all time next up is the YA shelf there's not going to be many of these I assure you but first up we have the witcher this is all eight books and on top I have a black sheep there's like a dragon in front and there's toothless on top of last name Sora I have two copies just like I had last time because I really want to read them again and I'm going to read through the hardcover then I have another one of my favorite series of all time, except now it's complete. And you will notice that for a lot of my favorites, I have two copies because these are supposed to be for reading. And these, the UK editions, I tabbed horribly. 
So those are definitely not going to be for reading if someone else wants to, wants to read it or if I want to read it. Those are just special editions with everything that I marked so I can find my favorite passages, quotes, and whatever else. And they're kind of nostalgic because these editions are the ones that I had first. And the other ones are just for reading, the American ones. So I have double. And I am not sure which ones I prefer. Then here I have like the a painting of a little snow house on an easel. Uh, the American exchange student gave us that on the one year that he was with us. I think it was third year in high school and he gave that to all of us. So it's, it kind of fits with winter nights. So I thought this aesthetic is <laughs> kind of there. Then I have my Lee Bardugo and in front I have this art. Not sure where I even found it. I find most of my stuff, stuff on Pinterest. So no idea if you know, let me know. And I have, again, <laughs> double copies of all of the Grishaverse books. I'm not sure which ones I prefer, but they are both for different purposes. Some will be tabbed, some won't. These editions all have extra stuff, so I guess they're kind of, kind of my favorites. I have the special edition Shadow on Bone, Language of Thorns, with no dust jacket, thank God, because it's way prettier like this. And I have the Lives of Saints. So yeah, this is the YA shelf. I mean, Witcher technically isn't YA, but you get it. Now we're down to the bottom shelf, so I had to sit down and the angle might be a bit awkward, but this is where I keep all the dust jackets in case I want to keep some of them on. I have, this is again, just like last time, I didn't change the <laughs> meaning of like the shelves that you don't see in videos because I need some trash shelves so I can put stuff that I don't want seen down there. <laughs> We have the Strange of Dreamer books, just like last time. We have the first, Liza Locklamora. There's Neil Gaiman, these two. I've got the first Queen of the Tearling, Gretchen McNeil, a copy of Dune. I don't need this displayed, really, because I have the fancy, the fancy trilogy edition. Then here I have Maven. <laughs> Again, don't know whose art it is. I put Maven in a frame because, I mean, yeah, why, <laughs> why not? I had that in another place. But it kind of fit in better here. And this is my name. My grandmother had my first and second name, I think. Calligraphied somewhere. I think it's Japanese. But to be fair, I am not sure. So if you know, again, please let me know. I put that here just to cover up the ugly stuff. Here I have Cassandra Clare. I only read that one, to be fair. Then here I have a copy of 1984 I need to return to my friend. And then I think the rest is the same like last time. We have the Kiss of Deception trilogy. I have a Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. And then the rest of the books there are Red Queen, which again, I will never get rid of, but I would prefer not to see them. So this is the dumpster fire shelf, but this one is actually fairly organized. I'm going to have to decide whether I show you the other two because they are a mess, but <laughs> this is the first one that's kind of all right. I think we will start with the pretty shelves and then in the end I might show you the dumpster fire shelves. This is the first of the dark wood shelves that I will show you at least. That's the, it used to be just the Tolkien shelf, but now it's evolved into Tolkien and graphic novels. Anyway, again, another relevant. Then we have all the Tolkien editions that's, Serbian and Croatian and my box set in English. I gave my dad back his editions because I just wanted to have room for these. I put this snow thing because I kind of messed up the spines of this box set. So I wanted something pretty in front. There's the Hobbit graphic novel. There I have my Long John Silver graphic novels. I put this one in front because it's the prettiest. Again, my Lord of the Rings dagger. I have the first of the three cups. And then we have the graphic novels. The same as last time, our Aristotle, Watchmen, V for Vendetta, and Saga Compendium 1. I think this is kind of a pretty shelf, but to be fair, there's not that much on it anymore. It used to just be for Tolkien, but now I've expanded. And if I need more room, I will just like move this so it's not displayed. Next up is the Star Wars shelf, which looks a bit different, although it has the same entries. I think it kind of looks prettier because I organized it differently. So on this side, we've got everything like before. We have the Star Wars trilogy, we have the extra books, and then we have the two books in the sequel trilogy. Some of the stuff that you will see, like, for example, 
the tag right there and right there were from clothes or something, but they looked pretty cool, so I used them. Then we have Darth Sidious over there. Then here we have my merch stuff. We have BB-8, the Lego C-3PO with the red arm. We have the Stormtrooper, the R2-D2 mug I use for my, like, drawing papers videos and we have the star wars black cards which i didn't i just realized i didn't show you the attack on titan cards and i might like pull out these cards and attack on titan just to show you so i have all the star wars books here again they're not all mine some of them belong to my dad's friend who lives in sweden so he can't exactly pick them up yet this one is his that one is his and so is Darth Plagueis, which is where <laughs> I think Darth Plagueis is like there. These two are new and the other stars. I think it's all the same. We have the keychain that's Grogu and we have my little Vaders and a very badass looking Leia. So yeah, I think this is kind of the same, but it kind of is organized. And we have my golden Yoda on The Last Jedi. I think this is kind of the same as last time, but I organized it differently. Next up, we have my pretty shelf, which is what you mostly see in videos. Now, I mean, obviously, I you know all of these from my videos, but I have the Penny Dreadfuls on top because I wanted to make room for Robert Frost and Jane Eyre. We have Jane Austen on the far end, Earthsea, Robert Frost collection of poems. That's a beautiful book, but I will, like, talk about pretty books in another video. We have Jane Eyre, which just got here, like, two days ago. It's a gorgeous cloth-bound edition. Then I have Gods and Heroes of Ancient Greece, the Dune Trilogy, Edgar Allan Poe, and then I have my Attack on Titan collection. I pulled, like, this mug, this ceramic mug with a raven next to this. <laughs> so behind here, I have the translated, printed version of No Regrets. Then I have my German versions of No Regrets. I am planning to get, like, a hardcover colored version of No Regrets in English anyway, so... Then we have my Attack on Titan series up until the end of season three or volume 22, I think. This is like season two. And these are extras, so I just flip them around to look like this because they are doubles. And here I have a little <laughs> Santa snow globe, which I'm going to obviously remove now that it's not Christmas anymore. But anyway, this is probably the prettiest, prettiest shelf I own. And I love these box sets. You would think I'd be annoyed that I didn't get the season two box set, but can, to be fair, it's Rhina. So, I mean, I'm fine. I, I can deal with it. <laughs> it looks really pretty though. Like, especially this like third season one, because it's all one image. So it's kind of cool looking. The last of the pretty shelves is my TBR shelf and Dan Brown shelf. So let's start in this end. I had to stack them because I'm running out of room and I have a lot of crap in front. If we're going to be fair, I have the fake plant candle number three and I have like the pins for my cork board. Anyway, this is my TBR. It's not changed much. I need to blow through it anyway. That like what else is new? I added Dexter, the first book, because we have it for some reason. And then here I have my Dan Browns and like a cactus candle. Here I stacked all my Dan Browns and Agatha Christie on top because she didn't kind of fit in anywhere else. I have the abridged version of Count of Monte Cristo because it's very pretty and small and I got it for my birthday but I mean I would never read that. It's abridged. They cut out some important stuff and then aside Dan Brown I have my Robert Louis Stevenson here because he kind of not genre wise but he fit in size wise. I think there's nothing really new here. And that's the last of the shelves that are pretty. I don't know what I'm going to do about the ugly ones, but obviously like you'll see in the next clip. I'll just show you the books, I guess. You don't have to see how dusty it is this time. We have Holy Bloodline and the Holy Grail. I think that's what it's called. Steve Jobs. These are like the books that I will probably get rid of and some that I just have nowhere else to place. We have the Cruel Prince trilogy, which I'm thinking of getting rid of here i have again a cluster of crap there's like extra toner for my printer there's a random santa claus some candles that i don't want to throw out because they have a nice scent and stuff like that there's like little box with little toys i think then sorry i have to bend a lot for this one then we have the secret circle books the vampire diaries books i don't want to get rid of those again nostalgia for vampire diaries i want to read the secret circle actually 
Then there's Eden Prophecy by Graham Brown, which just sounds like a Dan Brown ripoff. Then there's some other ran random stuff. These are all... Love Rosie is down there and just some other random classics, I think. And then in front, I just put this because it's it's very pretty. That's a translation that my dad did. And it's a very boring book, but it looks kind of pretty here. So yeah, this is the second dumpster fire shelf but it's not the worst one believe me i'm going to show you the cards now but if you're just here for the aesthetics you can leave because i'm going to show you the cards and then i'm going to show you the trash fire shelf anyway this is the first one it's the attack on titan cards i'm just going to take out like i don't know two or something so you can see what they're like and it might help you decide if you want some or not they're packaged like it's literal gold in here <laughs> anyway let me just this is what they look like on the back it's levi and then it's random images on the inside these two happen to both be aaron but yeah love the cards most of them are actually levi and mikasa which again kind of makes sense and then here is the star wars box it's like a stormtrooper and then on the inside these are actually really cool so this is what they look like on the other side and this is what they look like these are both jokers that's han and the aces are vader so these are like really really cool the only problem is that they all kind of look the same when you're playing so it can be a bit difficult but they are actually really really gorgeous and i played with them once i think and the king and the queen are, I think, Leia and Luke. And I'm not sure what the jack is. But yeah, that's it for the cards. I got the Star Wars cards in a local store, so I can't really help you with that. But the Attack on Titan car cards I definitely got on Wish. And I think you can get them, like, everywhere. So that's it for the cards. Let's just put them back on the shelf. And I can show you the Trash Fire shelf. Which again, just click away if you're in it for the pretty content because it's not going to be pretty. Here's the shelf I almost don't want to show you, but this is the reality. This is the trash shelf. I had to double stack because like I had no more room. So like on the top, there's a lot of stuff that just did not fit anywhere. And this is the shelf that no one's ever going to see. So who cares? Behind all of these books are like a lot of classics. I'm not going to get into it now because there's a lot of random ones and it's not really that relevant. Like there's a lot of Sherlock Holmes, a lot of Jane Austen, random Edgar Allan Poe, a lot of random classics. Anyway, here I keep like all my book tabs, the sticky tabs that I got in Italy and stuff. Then I moved these two up here. They used to be on the pretty shelf because, again, I had no room and they're not that important. So I didn't really have to display them. We have the complete Sherlock Holmes. We have we have King Arthur and his stories by Howard Pyle. We have the first Anne of Green Gables books. They are really pretty, but I, I just kept them there because they, again, didn't fit down on the pretty shelf. And they don't really match, so it's kind of okay here. I'm going to get the third one probably in a hardcover too, so they at least match a little bit. I have poems by Alfred Tennyson and Emily Dickinson. That's a really pretty cover, actually. I like these editions a lot. Then I have my very battered, very cheap Jane Eyre copy that I read. It has really thin pages and really small font, so the other book was an upgrade. But this one is tabbed with all my favorite moments, so we're just going to keep here, keep it here. Then I put these two postcards here again so I can just keep some sort of a vibe and to conceal all the chaos that is behind. Then here I have my George Orwell books. We've got Animal Farm and 1984. Every time, it's kind of funny. That's why I keep Animal Farm up there because one time when my friend visited, she was like, why do you have Stalin on your bookshelf? And I thought it was funny, so I kept it. Here we have a naked troll. That's my mom's and it just kind of chills there. And then we have again the New English Dictionary, which is actually a safe for my money. So that's kind of cool. And yeah, this is a reality. I think everyone who has a bookshelf has to have one of these, especially people that film bookshelves. I don't really believe you that you do not have a single shelf that is a mess. That is it for the video. I'm just going to give you a glimpse into my, <laughs> the rest of my room, the cork board and the Death Note poster. 
this is it for the bookshelf tour. I hope you enjoyed it. I love watching these and I love doing these at the end of every year. I hope this one was a bit better than the last one because there was no flashing lights. And in any case, again, hope you enjoyed. Let me know what was your favorite. If you have any questions, I will happily answer them. And again, happy holidays. I hope to publish this before the new year. So still happy holidays and I will see you in my next video.